Yo, what is going on everybody? It is straight out of Boston here and today I'm back for episode number 54 of the Pirates franchise here on MLB 17 The Show. So Austin Meadows, back and healthy, but unfortunately a glitch in this game is preventing me from adding him to the postseason roster. It says he's either already on the postseason roster or still on the disabled list and I can't activate him. He's not available in the lineup screen, so unfortunately... And I looked it up on Operation Sports, I found a good form about it, and apparently it is just a glitch in this game, but we will be without him for the rest of the playoffs now, unfortunately we won't be able to reactivate him. So it is the Red Sox, who defeated the Angels in the ALCS in six games, and they uh, defeated a team that was ten games better than them, or nine and a half games better than them during the regular season, but uh, still a team that was actually ranked higher than them. So probably a little bit more talent than Los Angeles, Los Angeles has a pretty good pitching staff. But a lot of lefties, that would have been a good matchup for us. And not a great group of position players. Boston probably with the better group of position players, but maybe the inferior pitching staff. But they're getting it done here today against our ace, Jacob deGrom. As it's Chuck Lloyd, who's out-dueling him here tonight. 7-1 to one Red Sox. We're getting a couple runs back here off of Jimmy Nelson working out of their bullpen. So it's 7-3 to three here in the 7th inning. Bill Favre on pitches a scoreless 7th. Nelson's still out there for the Pirates. Now they go to, or not for the Red Sox, they go to Preston Hook. And Hook tosses a scoreless 7th. So we go to Cliff Hinson here for our half of the seventh. He gives two more back, but we get four runs in the eighth. So it's nine to seven now. Hinson's still out there. I go to Barrett Boyce. Boyce with the fielder's choice and then a double play ball. So he keeps the lead at two. Carter Caps turns it over to Brandon Kinsler, who's only a 68 overall, but he is the closer for this Red Sox team. We got two men on. Go ahead, run at the plate. But we, uh, to no avail there is Vina strikes out. And uh, that retires the side. So the Red Sox win game one in Pittsburgh. And they're looking to win game two here. It's Zach Wheeler on the mounting. It's Henry Alvarez. And he is shutting out the Pittsburgh lineup so far. Two to one Boston. As Alvarez escaping the top half of the seventh unscathed there. Bottom half though. We do not get anything going. So it's still two to one. Alvarez out there. We're going to go to a pitching change now. Barrett Boyce comes on with one out of the inning. He retires the next two men he faces. Joe Kelly pitches a clean uh, you know, first two parts of the uh, eighth inning. And then Caps gets the final out. Osuna on for our half of the ninth. Pitches a one, two, three, ninth. Not a 1-2-3-9, but a scoreless ninth. Kinsler, though, gets his second straight save, and the Red Sox take a 2-0 series lead in the first two games of the series, which were in Pittsburgh. So a uh, scary start to the series for the Pirates, a team looking to capture their second World Series in four years. But we've got a 6-3 lead now as Chris Sale, who's down to like a 85 overall, I think, for the Red Sox in this, and is not the same guy that he is in real life. He struggled in this game. He got six runs off of him. Tanaka throws the complete game. To give us the six to three win, so we win game three. It's two to one now. Mitch Keller going against uh, the Red Sox starter here in game number four, and this has been a pitcher's duel so far. But now both sides have got a run, so it's one to one here in the eighth, and it's Keller still out there. Finally, we take him out. Barrett Boyce on retires the side in order. On to the ninth we go. Tyler Thornburg giving up a couple of base runners, but gets a big strikeout with two outs to retire the side to the bottom half of the ninth. They lead off double for C.J. Crone. But back-to-back -back outs and then three straight outs there. Nicely done by Barrett Boyce. He gives us the second consecutive scoreless inning for him. And then Joe Kelly gives up a two-run home run to Steven Esposito in the 10th. That gives us a two-run lead. In the bottom half, we turn the game over to Osuna. A 1-2-3 10th from him. And just like that, the series is tied at two games apiece. So a very pivotal game. Five coming up here. Jacob deGrom and Zach Wheeler. Wheeler back out on three days rest after pitching in game two of the series. We've got deGrom on full rest after he struggled in game one. But he's got a good start going so far. Unfortunately, second straight time, we've not been able to hit Wheeler. DeGrom running into trouble in the seventh. We turn it over to Barrett Boyce. Finally, Marte with a solo home run. That ties the game up at one in the seventh. Or in the eighth, I should actually say. Boyce back out there for the bottom of the eighth. He got the final out of the seventh. Gets three more outs in the eighth. We head to the ninth. Tied at one once again, just like we were last night. Now we turn the game over to Osuna. He retires the side in order in the ninth. So we are going to extra innings for the second straight day. As nothing going to the top of the 10th, but Osuna tosses his second straight scoreless inning. Tyler Thornburg on now for the Pirates, and he gives up the solo home run to Gary Sanchez that puts the Pirates on top. For the second straight night, they've taken the lead in extra innings, and for the second straight night, they win the game in extra innings. A 2-1 victory, Velasquez with the save. So just like that, the Pirates have reeled off three straight wins. We lead the series three games to two. After falling behind two games to none in those first two games in Pittsburgh, the road team has won every game this series. But it's Pittsburgh now with the chance to clinch these series at home with Henry Alvarez going against Chuck Lloyd. Lloyd was their game one starter, getting a, a couple extra days of rest here. He's on six days of rest. Alvarez is on four days of rest after going in game two, a game in which the Pirates lost. But Alvarez was not too poor in that game. 
He's got Christian Yelich here, the leadoff man for Boston. He strikes out on the slurve. First K of the day for Alvarez. Now it's Jorge Mateo up next. He's behind in the count one and two. Mateo drives one to deep right center field. Marte on the run. And check out this catch by Starling Marte. Just pulls up at the right time and got there in plenty of time. Nice play by Marte. Not a play that a lot of center fielders can make, but a guy with his speed and his ability doesn't even have to dive for it. So uh, nicely done there. In the second inning we are now, it's Benintendi up after the leadoff man walked. That is a base hit through into right field. So it's going to be first and second out for the Red Sox with no outs here in the second inning. And now the next man up is Daniel Robertson dealing with a 3-2 count. That's a slow ground ball. We will flip to second for one. Slow flip, though. The toss to first is not in time. We don't turn the double play. So one out first and third for Mookie Betts, who's batting at the bottom part of this lineup. But unfortunately, despite his overall ratings being down to a 78, he's still pretty quick. He beats out the double play ball, so a run does come home. Two outs in the inning now for Vasquez. He grounds one softly. Alvarez making the play off the mound. And that will retire the side. So through one and a half, it's one to nothing Red Sox now. Take a look at the Pirates lineup as we will finally get some clips out of them here in the second inning. And yeah, pretty standard li there, the lineup there. Same lineup we've been rocking against righties all postseason long. It's Vina striking out, though, with two outs. That is the third and final out of the inning. So to the third we go. Boston still on top, one to nothing. It's Yelich up for the second time today. This time he's going to get the better of Alvarez, just keeping that one fair. It bounces over the left field wall. That will go for a ground rule double later in the inning. While he is on third base with two outs, it's Bogarts up at the dish. He takes this one off the wall, this time off the right field scoreboard. And that is going to be extra bases. The run does come home and score. And it's 2 to nothing Boston now. And on the RBI double from Xander Bogarts. Now this is a ground ball to Seager. Nice play to his left. Plays it on the hop perfectly. And gets the uh, runner CJ Crone at first. For the third and final out of the inning. On to the bottom of the third. Henry Alvarez up. Alvarez is going to uh, bloop this one into left center field. And that is going to be a base hit. So Alvarez, although not a very good hitter. He is actually not a bad athlete for a guy his size. He's got 45 speed. And 65 steal. He was moving on that 3-2 pitch, but he goes for ball four. So two men on here for the Pirates in their half of the third inning. Lindor is up now with one out. And he grounds this one. Taylor made double play ball to second for one. On to first in time. A big 4-6-3 double play. And that gets Chuck Lloyd out of the inning. Still 2 to nothing. Now Robertson up with a man on. After it was Benintendi who let off the inning with a walk. Robertson... Now with a base hit into right field, Benintendi moving on the pitch. He goes first to third with no one out in the inning now. Mookie Betts up next. Betts is going to fly one towards center. Pretty shallow, but Marte doesn't have the strongest arm of the league by any stretch of the word. And he is going to fire it into home plate, but not in time. As Benintendi scores and it's 3 to nothing Red Sox. Now the next man up, Christian Vasquez. He strikes out on the high fastball. Alvarez trying to get that strikeout pitch working. He would finish with only four strikeouts here tonight. He's got Chuck Lloyd now with two outs. Lloyd grounds it softly. Lindor making the play. He will toss it to second in time. And that goes for the third and final out of the inning. So to the bottom of the fourth, we go down by three runs now. We need to start chipping away at that lead if you want to stay in this game. As Alvarez has not been too sharp tonight. Esposito going to deep right center. And a great running catch by Christian Yelich. I didn't think Yelich had a chance. Normally, A.J. Pollock roams center field for the Red Sox, but they have Yelich out there tonight. Pollock not in the starting lineup. Typically, I think they have maybe their left fielder, Benintendi D.H., or I don't know, because they, they have pretty good defensive outfielders. But it's Matt Adams crushing one to deep right field, and this game is tied. It was back-to-back -back walks that put two men on, and then Matt Adams got a pitch to hit, and he did not miss, hooking that up-and-away fastball into the right field bleachers on a long fly ball. That gets out of the yard. Not a well-located pitch by Chuck Lloyd. 96 in a very hittable part of the strike zone right there. And as I said, Adams did not miss. So just like that, we are tied at three. A big three-run homer. Now later in the inning with a man on, it's Rubio grounding one to the third baseman. Not an easy ball to turn a double play on, but Rubio not the fleetest of foot there. And it's Robertson who started the 5-4-3 double play to get out of the inning. On to the fifth. Bogart's up now. He is going to hit one into the corner there in left field. That one hops up off the wall. Esposito plays it as quickly as he can. But Bogart's is going to be in the second in plenty of time with a double now with two outs in the inning. It is Krohn up. He's going to hit it into right field for a base hit. That's going to get down. Rubio's throw towards the plate is going to be not in time. Bogart's diving ahead there safely with the head first slide. The head first dive, I should say. Getting the hand in there. Next batter, Benintendi. He strikes out, but a two-out rally for the Red Sox. Re gives them the lead. It's 4-3 to three now. As Alvarez's day would be done, we turn the game to Andreas Campos in the top half of the sixth. He strikes out Mookie Betts. Now dealing with Christian Vasquez with two outs in the inning. He jams him on the 97-mile-an-hour fastball. 
wraps up a scoreless sixth inning for Campos. Now on to the bottom half of the sixth. It is Kyle Seeger up with one out in the inning, dealing with the bullpen. And he is going to bloop one towards left fielder. That's going to get down. And this could be extra bases. Ben Attendi taking a long time for him to get over to that one. And that is going to indeed be extra bases as Seager slides into second base safely. One out now for Sanchez. He's going to hit one well towards left center field. And that is going to get down and into the alley. Seager rounding third. He will score. Sanchez is going to have himself extra bases. And we are once again tied. Gary Sanchez with a game-tying RBI double. Now Vina up with two outs in the inning. He flies one towards center. But Yelich is there in plenty of time. That will go for the third and final out. But the Pirates do get one back. Now it's 4-4. Four to four. We head to the seventh. Campos back out there for his second inning of work. No strikeouts this time. But he does pitch a scoreless inning. Working around a leadoff double. Gets Bogarts to fly out there. So bottom of the seventh. Ernesto Valenzuela pinch hitting for Campos here. To start things off in the seventh. He hooks it down the right field line. And Valenzuela now digging for two. He's another man with only 27 speed. And he is gunned out at second. A nice play by Mookie Betts who got the ball back in quickly. And uh, got it in as quickly as he needed to with Valenzuela running. So the next man up, Marte, he strikes out. And that is going to be the final out of the inning. It was not leading off with Valenzuela. That was actually with one out. But uh, it is Barrett Boyce on dealing with Benintendi here in the top half of the eighth. Strikes him out. Now Robertson, he's going to strike out on the changeup in the dirt. Back-to-back -back strikeouts with that filthy Vulcan changeup that Boyce possesses. And one man brought up potentially uh, switching Boyce to a starter in the future. Because he does have the stuff for it. It's something I haven't thought about, but certainly could be possible. I don't know if that would be too cheesy or not, though, because he would be unreal as a starter, I think. Probably the best starter in the game, quite frankly. So with a man on, though, Esposito hitting it over the right fielder's head. That's going to get down and go off the wall. Runner coming around to score, and he is safe at the plate. It was Frankie Lindor who started the inning with a walk, and then Esposito a double over the right fielder's head. Next man up with single, so it's first and third with no one out. This is a pop fly to the right fielder. Betts is going to be there. We're tagging up on the play with the runner at third. Esposito will score. Seager is going to try and get to second base, but uh, he will be thrown out there, actually. So we do get the second run home. It's 6-4 to four now. Pirates, we head to the ninth. We take the lead. It's Osuna trying to close out the game and clinch our second World Series in four years, but Mookie Betts has other ideas in mind as he starts the inning off with a single through the middle. And that is going to bring the tying run to the plate now in the form of pinch hitter Carlos Gonzalez. A man with a lot of pop in his bat, but he strikes out on the changeup. One away now in the inning for the next man up. And he is going to try and check a swing there, but it's ball four. So two men on now for the Red Sox with one out in the inning. Yelich up next. He is going to flip one in the center field. Blooping fast, and it's going to fall. One run is going to score. Marte throws the third to keep the tying run at second with one out of the inning. Mateo up next. Tying run in scoring position. That is strike three looking. He goes down in the changeup. Two away. Pirates now one out away from a World Series title. Bogarts. He strikes out swinging and the Pittsburgh Pirates have returned to the top of the baseball world for the second time in four seasons. They are World Series champions avenging their defeats in the playoffs the last two years. A Game 7 loss to the Cleveland Indians after being up three games to two. And a Game 6 loss to the Los Angeles Dodgers in the championship series last year. A series in which uh, the Pirates did not lead at all, I don't believe. Uh, just outmatched by that L.A. team. But we got the best of them this year. And we got the best of everyone we faced as we are back on top of the baseball world. World champions once again, Pittsburgh. Has retooled quite a bit their roster since uh, their last championship. We've lost guys like Gregory Polanco, Brandon Crawford, Garrett Cole, and uh, even guys like Josh Tomlin. But we retooled. We've got different starters now. We've got Steven Esposito. We've got Francisco, Francisco Lindor. We've got Kyle Seeger. So lots of new faces. Got a new first baseman. No more Eric Thames. Very different team than the one that won a couple years ago. We did have uh, Tanaka, of course. But I don't think we had DeGrom. I don't think we made that trade until the year after. So... Pretty uh, pretty interesting that the, the roster does look so different. Kind of, though, like the Red Sox, who won two World Series in four years in the 2000s. And their 2017 looked a lot different than 2014, so a little bit comparable in that sense. But anyway, that is going to do it, so I hope you guys did enjoy. I am going to post the offseason, but in the offseason video, I'm going to talk a little bit about whether I want to continue with this series or possibly start another Sim franchise. But uh, I'll talk more about that in the offseason and possibly in a separate video. Until then, that's going to do it. hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'm out. Peace.